What's up? What's up, everybody? Come on into the Rooted in Progress Stream Center. Welcome back. You're back with your face. Yes. 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 yes, yes. Deanne King here. Terrence, tell the people what's up with you. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I uh, <laughs> always happy, always excited. Mm. This is fun. Um, we're here. We got an interesting topic today, De Deanna. So we sure do. Who am I? Deanne. My Deanne. goodness. Yeah. Deanne. Deanne. So much of a co host. Like, what kind of co host are you? Deanne. 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 What kind of co host are you? Uh, it's one of those days, one of those days so far, but this is not mm -hmm. going to uh, uh, signify what <laughs> this show is going to be about. <laughs> Let's dive right into this. Get uh -uh, me off the spot. Uh -uh. Don't try to switch the subject up. <laughs> let's let's get, nah, let's get talk me about off it. the spot. Let's, let's dive talk about into it. this. Let's talk about it. All right, I'm, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a break, y'all. Welcome to episode four. Yes, episode four is a good one, y'all. This is about the Jackson House. If you don't know what the Jackson House is, how historic it is in our community here in Tampa Bay. Well, it's time for you to find out. We have yes. a lot to catch up on as it relates to. The Jackson House, just to give you a brief synopsis, this was a rooming house where pivotal, historic, monumental black figures, this was going to be the only place they could actually yep. stay while visiting here in Tampa. And so this has, it has so much history. It was built back in 1901. A family, a local family built this home and then it ultimately expanded. So there's so much history here. But if you're taking a look at this, if you're I know some folks might be listening right now, but if you're watching right now, you can tell it is in pretty bad shape. And so right now there are a lot of efforts, restoration efforts to bring the Jackson House back to life. That's why we are honored yes. to welcome into the Rooted in Progress Stream Center, Dr. Carolyn Collins, who is the chair of the Jackson House Foundation. Thank you, Dr. Carolyn, for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. Good morning, and Dr. Carol. Good morning. <laughs> we are Good so morning. happy to have you. I've known you for a little while. You are so full of life. You give so much to this community. You've been a part of this community for so long. We're going to make sure the folks know about you a little bit later. But we got to dive into this topic. So for folks who don't know about the Jackson House, give us, give us some history and some context about this historic spot. I think you did great starting off, and I want to kind of start off and almost hopefully end with the vision statement from our board, mm. and that's restoring history to inspire future generations. Wow. Individuals ask us about what's going on with the proposed museum at the state of Florida level or what's going on with the art center that's being uh, actually planned here for Tampa, and we let them know that those are things that's going to bring all of our history together and to the Jackson House, on the other hand, is restoring history that has already been made, that's already had a significant impact in this community. And we want to make sure that future generations, as well as current tourists and generations, yeah. know okay. what they're looking at when they see that house <laughs> that you saw that looked like it's about to fall. That part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it looks, honestly, Dr. <laughs> Carolyn, it looks like if you blow on it just a little. Yeah, that's the way I felt last week. <laughs> yeah. You blow on it just a little bit and it might tip over. Oh, yeah. Look at And I don't think you have to blow. You might be able to just wave your hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so, a three-year struggle to try to make sure that it didn't get to this face, but it's okay. We are not stopping. Yeah. And might I say at the beginning is this family invested in this community with history. Our board is investing in this house with commitment and dedication. Yeah. The house will be rebuilt at 851 Zach Street, not the old address it used to be, 839 or whatever that was. Forget that. It's 851 Zach Street. That's where the city is located. That's where the Jackson House Board of Directors are going to rebuild it. All right. Yeah. So it's in a rebuild phase. In the past, it was in a restoration, a stabilization and restoration. Uh, the family had their children to stay in that house and to provide services doing the Jim Crow era mm -hmm. when wow. individual and the, the service didn't just go to African Americans. You had Native Americans, uh, you had the military families that that came in, all the performers, civil rights uh, individuals. But the point was, we were so close hmm. to the train station, Union right. Station, mm -hmm. right there. Until when people came off the train, you in downtown Tampa, but depending on who you were, you got nowhere to stay. 
Wow. And mm-hmm. so while there were other smaller rooming houses, this happened to be, in a sense, right across Nebraska from the station. That's what they decided to do. People who needed to wait for a train the next day, at some point before they start allowing to be a rooming house, they allowed the people to sleep out on the porch. Wow. wow. And so they could just lay out there on the porch for free and then go back the next day across the street. So uh, it has served in that capacity where the brothers had taxi stations, uh, went down and they laundered in the house. They transport the laundry down to the judges wow. in the courthouses downtown. There was a beauty shop. You know, there was a barber shop. I mean, they served food. And, of course, uh, with the three pianos that became very popular in that house, front, uh, I call it in the hallway and on the back, that's where they did rehearsals and had sets for performances that they were going to do all up and down Central Avenue. And, I mean, the people who used to stay yeah. at the Jackson House, right. Pivotal, yeah. Ella Fitzgerald, Name some others Cap for me. Callaway, that, Ray Charles. Yeah. Oh, look at you on the roll. There you go. <laughs> Dr. Going. Martin Luther King Jr. Yes, yes. That's, that's amazing. And my husband get angry when I talk about it, and I don't say the baseball player that even ah. stayed in that, you know. But I always like to hear people talk about them, and I like what he calls somebody. You call by the circuit with this guy with the chick, with the bands and all that. But I always like to talk about Nat King Cole. Mm, Unfortunately, wow. for one reason, we had an opportunity to interact with his daughter prior to her um, transplant and her demise, her transition. Wow. And she was going to come in and do a concert for us. But Nat King, the house is famous going up the stairs to see fans along the wall. Okay. Those fans were collected by Willie Robinson, the youngest uh, family member of the Jackson House, who really tried diligently to keep the house going. Uh, because that was the desires of his mother. And uh, those fans came from his mother traveling with Nat King Cole because everybody know Nat King Cole wore a process. And once Willie's father, the barber, did his process, he would not go outside of the country to travel to go on tours without doing a set here in Tampa, have wow. Willie's father do his hair, and Willie's father traveled with him to keep his hair up while he was traveling. And periodically, his mother traveled, and she collected those fans, and they were all up the stairs in the house. So the house has contributed wow. to the economic development of our community. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has taught us, if we want to need a way, how to teach your children what to do. The younger ladies in the house, some of them went off to college and came back. They were born there. There's one still living in Tampa. But it has made a significant contribution uh, to the history of downtown Tampa, mm-hmm. Black Tampa, Hillsborough County, Florida, and even the United States and the world. Mm-hmm. And so it's worthy to watch it fall now and not to restore it Absolutely. would be total neglect on behalf of our board. And so uh, we've gone through some ringers, yeah. but we're going to come out on the other side where people are going to see a replacement of what this family put so much in since 1901, uh, mm-hmm. right there at 851 Zach Street. Although they didn't do it at 851, we know the history. Yes, <laughs> we know the address yes. was changed. Yeah, but only by a few numbers. But we're going to make sure that 851 Zach Street actually restore the history we tell story. Wow. Well, yeah. Miss Carolyn, you talked about you. You mentioned that you know this thing is is one strong wind away from blowing blowing over. Yeah. What's next? <sighs> like, like, what is taking so long to get mm-hmm. this restored? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be perfectly honest. First of all, it was a like of, I would call it internal structure, mm-hmm. when Willie was trying to set up his the business arm of his board or the house to get things done. And Willie is a grandchild, right? Willie Robinson was the grandchild okay. of the Jacksons. His mother, Robinson, is the daughter, and she was the last daughter that actually carried the house through okay. uh, to its completion. And then when she passed, she know what she wanted. I We have to give uh, her credit because it was Ms. Mrs. Robinson who actually pursued the landmark designation and the historical landmarks at both the city to county level, at the state level, and at the federal level. Okay. Yeah. And these were things that she wanted as she wanted to save the house. These were things she instilled into Willie. And being the only son 
uh, and he had uh, he, he and his wife had one daughter, and the daughter had two sons. Uh, Willie was determined to save this house, and so he would sit there with me in the NAACP office, and I knew something was coming down the road when uh, Omegas appointed him uh, to be our liaison. Uh, he would sit there. He knew I stayed there late at night. I would leave Tampa and go to the office and do things uh, during my presidency, and he would sit and talk with me. And finally, he got enough nerves up to say, will you come by the house and sit? I want to show you the pictures. And I went by, and I think he infected me when I went there with the Jackson House blues. <laughs> <laughs> and once they get in your blood, you understand what his mother had done, and you want to make sure that anything that you can do to contribute to the work that she and her family did and that Willie did. So the great delay was the number of people who was promising him that they were going to help him, and they would not. And that's why he wanted me to come to the house. Now that that was over with and we got in, it took me almost three years to try to get rid of the multiple uh, Jackson House organizations that was out there and that had been filed uh, we were able to, and by the time we got it almost together, uh, that was during the previous uh, mayor, Bob Buckhorn, and people started saying, tear it down, tear it down, put the yeah. ball and chain to it. And I went to him and I said, and I didn't go on my own. I will, I'm going to give credit right now to Congresswoman Castor. Mm -hmm. She sent uh, Chloe Coney and she said, you tell Carolyn that because of her involvement in the, and commitment in the community, that if she take this on, they will not ball and chain it. That's huge. That's and she kind of said, do it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, as we are doing it, I will be going back to her because I know there's some federal dollars out there. Also that. <laughs> I remember when you said, do it. Yeah. We need your help. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been, we've been really, really blessed. I was so grateful that Willie was able to see. We worked really hard. You know, why it took so long. After we got the organization together, we had people from St. Pete that came over that really wanted to see the house saved. They got on the board with us. Uh, the vice chair was from St. Pete, and our treasurer from St. Pete. Awesome. Okay. Awesome, uh, Pender and uh, Mr. Pro. And uh, we worked and kind of pulled the board together, and then we started looking. we got a good board, and we got a solid foundation, and we don't have any money. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the house was in despair asking for some help and uh, the Vinick Foundation who actually gives the uh, funding uh, at every game, every home game, mm -hmm. that $50,000 that they've been giving for well over 10 years. Uh, we were blessed to get that $50,000 right in the nick of time to get a contractor to come in and stabilize the home. Wow. And uh, we got that. What award. year was that? That was about 20, it was before 2016, because we just okay. looked at it uh, okay. recently, but right around that time. And we were blessed to get an African-American contractor who, okay. subsequent to that time, I will go ahead and mention now, is on our board. Wow. So we have a contractor there who know the in-depth of that house, and he makes sure that he keeps us aware of what's going on and things we need to do. But... After that stabilization, then we went to work with, let's go and find the history. And that's when we learned this thing in Tampa and in all cities across the country called Zero Lot Line. And Zero Lot Line says that there is no property line in the downtown metropolitan cities. So huh. the line stops where the line starts. So if you look at the Jackson House and you look at the fence, that's our property line. Okay. If you look at the business to the left of us, which is Enterprise, that's even though they're renting that, they lease that property, that is their property line. Mm -hmm. And on the other side of the house, which is more on the courthouse side, if you look at where the fence sent, that is the lot line of the Accardi 717 parking. So the zero lot line says, that's it. That's your property line downtown Dan. So, Ms. Car Ms. Carolyn, if I can just jump in here. For those people who are listening and not watching our, our show here, uh, we're looking at a video where that fence line, if I was to put my, my one arm on the house, that fence line is not even in arm's reach. I mean, that zero lot line is literally, what, three feet maybe? If I don't think it's three feet. 
who just left them down. I go once a week. I mean, that at a minimum, the, but it's less than three feet. Yeah. You could probably barely walk through it, honestly. Easily. That's exactly I mean, between, my between the house, having a problem. Between the house and the fence, folks, you can barely walk through this. Exactly. You might have to turn sideways to get through. Exactly. So that's how tight this property line is. Yes. That's and, it. and that's been your argument. That's been our argument. That's been our fight. In other words, it's a historical property. One of our board members is determined that because it is a historical property, if we step outside of Florida and go to the feds, that the feds will be able to assist us in establishing uh, a move back, that you have to make the adjustment. And the key is there are codes to build properties and to build houses. We all know that. Seven feet in between Mm -hmm. anywhere else or whatever that is. Well, there is nothing there. So when you see the fence there, you see the cars pull right up to the fence. Mm-hmm. And that's where they park at, whether it's on either side, the east or west side, it doesn't really matter. And so if we build the house back there now because we are building, if we just was doing a little remodeling, but we're going in for a real major now rebuild, right. which was a restoration, you've got to have the the footage that you need so that the fire, the police, safety you right. know, is required now. And so those codes go into effect. So one of our board members have been saying, why won't the city, the county, and whoever on the property just do that? And so we've gone through quite a bit, and I would say that I think now, after the last three years in particular, it's been longer, but the last three years, that's what we've been working on because money was no longer an issue. We was issued uh, the blessings that we received uh, from Mr. Vinnick after the 50000 that everybody had been receiving for over well over 10 years. Um, we actually was received a, a million-dollar grant. And once Vinnick gave us that million-dollar grant, it just stopped pouring in. It's incredible. It stopped pouring Amazing. in. Money stopped coming. And our board decided we weren't going to ask people in the community for money until they could see something. Because we don't want people to think that we're taking money and we're expending it and we're doing something fraudulent. So we decided that we weren't coming to the community. We weren't going to do any fundraisers, even for us, for operations. We wanted to make sure that before we do any of that, people can see the house in progress. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we are now trying to wait on the final document. Uh, the Accardis have come in and said, okay, and we've all gotten together. But that was, I would say, it was nurtured mm-hmm. by uh, our current mayor who reached out to say we are going to help and our current city council who indicated they would help. And so... And I want to... I want to be real. Okay. I want to be real and honest here. We're talking about two organizations, right? 717 and FDOT. They were the ones, they're the owners of those two neighboring lands. Is that correct? No, just 717. Just 717. Mm-hmm. So really the, the the fight, so to speak, has been with 717. Why do you think there has been hesitation from 717 to give y'all? The, you need 10 foot, you need a 10 foot easement on both sides, right? Mm-hmm. What was the issue here? I think the issue with 717 is a business that uh, have invested in buying property and doing parking, and there is that, that's their property. And they, uh, our investment is what our mission says. We're going to restore history. Mm-hmm. So you got two separate entities, a 501, three sitting over here saying we're going to restore history, and you've got a, a, a for-profit business sitting over here saying we're going to make money. Mm-hmm. And so we, we were clashing. We were clashing. I feel like the last time we talked for folks who, again, are new to Rooted in Progress. Remember, this is this is all stemming from our Rooted in Progress Black History Month special that we had back in February. Dr. Carolyn was a part of that special. We did an update on the Jackson House. And the last time we talked, I felt like we were in the same position. And that was in February. So what's different between February and now? Interesting. I think we've been in the same position for three years. That's My what goodness. a house look like it is now. And I'm going to be perfectly honest about that. The mayor actually stepped in a, about a year or so ago, and she put some of her administrators in place. And I would say what's different now is the 
the administrator that she put in place well over about 14 months ago came in and said, we're going to get this done. And I have to give him credit because he would say to me, I'm serious about this. He said, when I go home and my children see me, they go, have you saved that Jackson house yet? <laughs> and he say, so I'm not just getting the flack from you or getting the flack from the mayor of the city. I'm getting the flack from when I go home. What yeah. have you done? So I think when he came in with a different a look on things, he really worked hard. We've been fortunate with the Venix, and there are two folks that I've worked with with the Venix who have done everything, due diligence, moving forward, legal and an administrative person. And so one of them took that on to work with the Accardis. Okay. And so those are the owners of 717. Uh, our Cardis are the owners of 717. Okay. And uh, so where we are differently from where we were when we started this three years ago, I feel we've gone through a long uh, train of, we've hooked up every train we could to come in Union Station. <laughs> and I think we're at the caboose now. We're at the end because, okay. you know, I, I tried my hand at writing a document. I'm not a lawyer, but I wrote a document because my board kept saying no. No, no, because what we were receiving the sign was something the board was saying no. And it wasn't that our board was holding anything up. It's that our board is a group of intelligent lawyers, mm -hmm. a group of intelligent accountants, a group of intelligent CPAs, you know, a group of intelligent art educators. And, and some of us graduated from HBCU, some from PWIs. Uh, and I consider myself reasonably intelligent. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I didn't like what I was looking at to sign. Mm. And so as a result of that, I said, enough of this. I'm going to write it myself. There you go. Yeah, because my board was getting to the point that they were putting <laughs> me on the other side of the fence saying I was with them. Mm. Oh. And I said, no. So I actually took a combination of documents that we've had to sign when we did the last stabilization about three or four years ago. USF came in, went upstairs with the drone, took all pictures. We were able to put a double floor in upstairs where people could actually go upstairs and walk through the rooms okay. and see the rooms. We were able to uh, actually tag things that we needed to keep. We were able to get the exact colors because that room had a different color in each room. Wow. And that's going to be significant for us as we start putting the plans uh, that is already in place, but we finalized them to return the Jackson House to the community, whether we want to use those same colors. So we did all that, that kind of stuff, secondary to the second stabilization. Okay. So where we are, I would be pleasing to say, is we went and got a grant. Okay. And, and I tell people we're somewhere around $4.3 million, which mm -hmm. will be good. Okay. But when we went and got our grant, I started off with the mayor reaching out to assist us, Mr. Vennick coming back with the million. Then we recently found out that the city council through uh, the CRA had given us a million during the same time, Mr. Vennick, but we didn't know. Oh, wow. But now we know. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the state of Florida and wrote for a historical grant, an AACH grant. I won't go through what all that is, but it was yeah. designated uh, by the uh, black legislators. Because for two years they had worked with um, Senator Dal Roussant yeah. and Representative Diane Hart, okay. who had worked with the mayor to try to go to Tallahassee and work with us funding. with the Jackson House to get funding. And the legislators, particularly the African-American legislators across the state, had supported them. Wow. And finally they go, why are we doing this just for the Jackson House? Do we have funds available where we can do this across the state of Florida? There are a number of properties around this state that looks like this yeah. and that need to be saved. And so they did and came up with $30 million. We were blessed. We were able to do the grant and get one. You could either get as little as whatever, 10000 and go all the way up to a million, stopped at $50 million unless you can match it. And we had matching funds, thanks to Mr. Vinnick. Wow. So we were able to get that million and additional funds that came in. But we were still trying to deal with how do we get this code adjusted right. to get 20 feet. <laughs> right. When easier. was your last meeting with 717? Uh, I haven't met with 717 probably in a couple of years because they've been meeting with the lawyers. Okay. Uh, but this last document that uh, next to the last document, then when I wrote mine, uh, what our lawyer that's working with us pro bono mm -hmm. uh, is doing is he's taking the document that my board approved that I wrote, the last document we received from them, and we said, 
let their document somewhat stay whole, but take our document and superimpose it on top of theirs and tell them this is what the Jackson House will be willing to sign. Does that have anything to do with city council? I've been keeping an eye on this. This is rooted in progress. We are staying rooted and we are looking at the progression of the black community here in Tampa, right? It continues to die in city council. Why do we keep seeing that? Is that because of the back and forth between the attorneys? Yes. And and the honest city council has given us almost 100% support okay. and indicated that they are ready to move. But they, they can't move until all parties... The dilemma that we have right now is city council and the CRA is there to support us because the city count and the mayor, because the mayor has to put her staff on it. And we've gotten new people from her staff. The mayor even called in where you are. She said, look, she called me. She said, let's have a meeting. Mm -hmm. She said, because I don't see the progress. And this was not quite a year ago, but I would say six months or so. So we and she said, let's come to my office. She said, you think it's large enough in the conference room? And we were packed. And, you know, we were all in there because I carried five board members. Uh, the city had all of their people there. And then we met the uh, next time after that because the county is involved with us as well, thanks to, and I have to give thanks, thanks to Les Miller. Uh, before he left, I went to him and I said, Les, don't leave us. And Les was able to get money for us from the county. I did go to um, a congress. Mm, Mm -mm, I was going to say Congress. I also went to Commissioner Gwen Myers, Gwen Myers. Mm -hmm. and I asked her would she continue what Les had given us. I don't know where that is. I don't think we've received it, but hopefully in the next two year cycle before she leaves, she'll make sure that that's there. But the the problem we have is we've got to have that, or we can't move. The city council can't give it to us. Uh, we think without the twenty feet. We got to have it on each side for code requirements. So what's our timeline here, right? So you're saying you think we've reached the end. You think we have a, a solution or at least an agreement. What's the timeline now? Last Thursday, and I was very well promised by this, uh, the state has a, a lock on us as well with that grant. And I'm not upset about the state. Because the state keep us in place. They make sure all parties are doing what they're supposed to do. And they are another, in my opinion, a protection agent for us okay. to make sure no one is taking advantage of us or no one is doing something they shouldn't do. And they want to make sure that that house is rebuilt as a historical property, as it was. Therefore, we've got to, it's going to cost more because of the wood, the windows, all this has to be replaced almost identical just think in 2000 yeah. of what it was in 1900. Right. And we found one or two companies that can do one of these two things. And we, thanks to Pat Cruz on my board, uh, we've even gone to seminars, uh, webinars to take a look at what the replacement woods are, how you can get those in from right. a federal perspective. So that is still going on. But what we need and where we are as of last Thursday, uh, the state told me no. You cannot do emergency stabilization. Now, that house looked like you said blow, I said wave. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that house need emergency stabilization right now. But the state's saying no. Because Ooh. if we do the emergency stabilization, we have to have plans. The plans have to go up to the state, and the state need to make sure that whatever is being used to stabilize it is going to be pretty consistent with what it needs because this is beyond stabilization. This is so much. So I'm trying to, basically what I'm trying to get down to the bottom, has anyone given you a clear timeline that says, hey, 717 is going to be locked and loaded on this date at this time. We can actually start getting funds from the city, from the county, everybody on this day. Is there any no. of that? Well, we got, it, it almost sounds like a waiting game. Like this, their, their, uh, their attorney, 717's attorneys are just trying to wait you guys out. Because, you know, the longer you go... But the, what are they the waiting for? Drop, are they waiting for a hurricane to come through and well, slash down the Jackson House? What are we waiting one, on? Or the fact that they're just going to try to make you go broke. You know, I'm going to say this because I work with people like... And I'm going to call their names because they're not here anymore. But I work with people like Randolph Kinsey, uh, Ian Casal, uh, Carl Warren. And we were the ones who went to the school board with this same kind of situation. And we wanted Blake High School rebuilt. And in the process, we found out about a five-year plan, how long you had to wait in order to get these schools. And so we say, well, if it's going to take five years, we want Blake now, and we want Middleton in the next five-year plan. 
And that's how Blake and Middleton came back. A lot of folks know some of it. Some of them do not. Uh, we went to Fred Hearn and them on the Middleton side and say, lay low. We got you. Right. You know, but this is what. And this is what the superintendent, who's no longer living now, came to us and said. He said, they always said that you guys is not going to last. You don't stay. You put something out there and you don't stick with it. He said, but I want to compliment you guys because y'all walked in the door with a petition. Y'all said what you were going to do. And even though it may have taken you six years to do it, you didn't stop until it was done. And then the other five years when Middleton came back. And, you know, that always stay in my head. Did somebody think we were going to go to sleep on this and we would give up? Well, we're not giving up. And in December of 2023, the board met. And I told the board, we got to send a clear message. And we did. And our message was, we rebuild in the Jackson House at 851 Zach Street. We're going to rebuild it as a historical property. And if we lose the historical landmarks that Willie Robinson's mother worked so hard, Ms. Robinson, to obtain, even if we lose those, we will lose them. We will build a brick house. It will be compliant to current codes. The house would be smaller. The facade on the outside would look identical to the Jackson House. So the Jackson House is going to be rebuilt, even if that what we look at now fall down. Right. We do not want it to do that because we want to maintain the historical status. And if it does, then we're going to rebuild it with the historical status. So once we said that, I think people start realizing after December 23, they are serious. We mm-hmm. told the architect, give us two plans, one with the 10 foot easement on each side and one without. So at what point do you all say we're going without? Uh, when we cannot sign a contract now, and I think, I really think that we meet on Monday, every other Monday, we meet with all the city, the Vinix, the county, everybody meet. And hopefully there are a couple of paperwork that we have to do because of the state, because we are collapsing all the funds so that we'll have one contract and not three. We'll have, you know, one person that's kind of overseeing everything and we'll be all signing off on it the way we have been previously doing. So I'm, I'm being perfectly honest. I do feel that this final document that we get back, and I have all the trust in the world in the attorney that's meeting with the Cardi's attorney, we should have that document probably today or no later than next week. And oh, wow. then there's another document next week that will be coming out of the city office that will be being signed by the city and the county, the Tampa Bay History Center. It's going to allow us to collapse the funds. So the city money, the county money, the Jackson House money that's building just for the house will all be handled in one pocket, the way it's currently being handled, but we bring okay. the city in. And once that occurs, I think the next issue will be they've got to give us that document because our board has to sign it. Mm -hmm. But the state has mandated that we don't sign it until the city and the history center signs it. And then it's okay with them. It's going to Tallahassee. Harley is a jewel that's working with us up there. I know she would have that back to us less than 24 hours and say sign it. Our board will sign it. And I think we will. Oh, <sighs> breathe a little bit. And it's been for me almost eight to nine years. Wow. My goodness. And I get paid enough for this. I get about a million dollars a month. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm about to so move I, over to the Jackson House Foundation. So I, I have, it, you know what? I have, this, I have this big, huge salary. Everybody keep asking me, what do you get paid mm-hmm. to take this on? Oh, a million a month. A million a month. A million I'm in the a wrong month. Business. So you're looking. Man. So you're looking at a billionaire here. <laughs> <laughs> About as broke as I can be. <laughs> nah. But we appreciate we appreciate your work. And I think what Absolutely. I want people to realize, we're gonna keep our foot on their necks too with this. And we wanna keep checking in for all of those folks who are listening and who are watching and you support this movement. Give. Dr. Carolyn ain't asking, but I am. You know, make sure that we are supporting. You know, folks always say, like, oh, yeah, I'm, I want to support, or oh, I'm down, and all these other things. But look at what you could be doing locally and how you could be giving and supporting and helping things like restoring the Jackson House. That is black, that is history. 
It's black history. It's American history. It's state history right on Zach Street in downtown Tampa. Rooted in progress. It's rooted in progress. In progress. <laughs> we are going mouth. to continue to keep our eyes on this. We're going to hope and we're going to cross our fingers. We'll hopefully have you back sooner than later. Because oh, the yes. sooner we have you back <laughs> on this show, that means we got an update. All you right. know what I mean? <laughs> so, Deanne, let me just jump in there. Uh, Dr. Carolyn, can you tell the folks how they can give? They can. can. We have our website, and they can go to the jacksonhousefoundation.org. If you're giving, we've had a number of individuals give. I've given presentations uh, during Black History Month, Mm -hmm. uh, major law firms here in the city, and they go, we want to, you know, pay you. I go, no, don't pay me. (laughs) Let's make that clear. Just make the check written to the Jackson House. I get paid by the man upstairs. That's enough. Wow. (laughs) Good okay. for you. Yeah, you. Keep me strong enough. I don't need anybody to give me no consultant money. I don't need anybody. If anybody really want to do anything, if you see a grant out there, I think Gerald Jean, one of the attorneys here locally, uh, she sent it to us. We're looking for a grant for infrastructure building, stabilizing our infrastructure because we want to okay. hire an executive director. Okay. That executive director got to be someone that got to come with power. You got to know mm-hmm. education. Yeah. Uh, you've got to know historic uh, entities. You got to be a curator. You got to be whatever. And so I had a. I was on a, a radio show in California last year at the Juneteenth that the mayor let us be for okay. center table, and the guy said, "Outside of building the house, can you tell our listening audience out here in California what you need?" And I say, "Yeah, as a minimum, one hundred sixty thousand dollars." I say <laughs> that'll give me a chance for eighty thousand dollars a year to hire me. Uh, executive director that's got to do a whole lot of work. You got to be a historian, a curator, you know, you got to be a grant writer. You got to do it all. But those are the things that I'm doing and also being the chair of the board. Right. Uh, And if I had a staff person that was doing this, I think this process would have been cut in half. I do not think we would have gone, gotten this much sooner than uh, maybe we could have saved a year or two because we're not dealing with a a situation that's Mm -hmm. fluid, congruent, uh, in total agreement because you're looking at, as I said yeah. earlier, a nonprofit organization is trying to restore history. Right. And you're looking at a private business that makes money. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that's and that's the fight yeah. right there. And not all private businesses who make money care to give back to the community. But I'll just leave that there. Um, Dr. Carolyn, yes, thank ma'am. you so much for oh, joining so us. Welcome. I think we have our marching orders for folks in the community. Uh, if you're lit or you are listening. Um jacksonhousefoundation.org to give and you give to the Jackson House Foundation and that's it or if you have a way to get a grant a grant that is key so anyone out there who can help with that but otherwise we're going again we're going to wait for another update I want the people to know Dr. Carolyn detached from the Jackson House Foundation Okay. I think it's about that time. Yes. We yes, mix things yes. up a little bit, Terrence. What you think? Absolutely. <laughs> so, Dr. Carolyn, we're going to play this game. Just cause it's called uh, get, get to, to know, know, your know your local leaders. Get to know your local leaders. Ooh, okay. mm. so, Dr. Carolyn, the first question <laughs> I want to know is, again, like Deanne said, that outside of the Jackson House, what does Dr. Carolyn like to do for fun? As well as what are some of your favorite places to go out to eat? Mm. Okay, what I like to do for fun is anything with my church and my family. Okay. Uh, I have to and put church my name? church, Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Shout Church, 2002 North Rome Avenue. There yes. you go. <laughs> there you That's go. That's where we had our little cheerleaders saying all the time. But uh, my church uh, right there in West Tampa, right across from Icon School where we built the school oh, okay. building. Icon Prep. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, that's our building that they rented from proud of them. It was the Mount Pleasant Standard Base Middle School. Uh-huh. And then they went out by USF when they made all the A's. And then Icon came in. Yeah. Um, so. What do you do with your family? Uh, my family, everything. Mostly travel. Um, okay. Yeah, my, I have two boys. Both of them on different ends of Florida. Uh, the youngest was in Michigan, and now he's back here. All right. Uh, he has two kids. Each one of them have two kids. So wherever those kids go, that's where we go. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. And okay. so my baby, yeah. <laughs> the 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 only girl, <laughs> the oldest had two boys. The baby had a boy and a girl, and she's on her way to Florida A&M University. Well, I'm at oh. Florida A&M University all the time. That's my third right. component outside my church and my family and not all the community things I do because I'm going to do those probably until the good Lord transition me up because that's my heart, mm-hmm. uh, trying to make a difference in the community. Yeah. Um, 
Fam you. Fam you is my love. Look, look at her right. necklace, okay. y'all. Yes. If you can see, if, if you're listening, you can't see it's a rattling necklace. But if you're looking, come on now. She keep it close to the chest. Right there by her heart. Right there. Don't take it off at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been there for about 25 years. Wow. My husband gave it to me. But uh, Florida A&M University being the only HBCU in the state of Florida, number one in the country in public schools and number three in private schools, Number 21 in the United States on social mobility. That means taking our kids from where they are to where they need to go. Mm -hmm. I can never uh, separate FAMU for what I do with my family and what I do with my church. So the kids in my church know where they're going. (laughs) And the kids in my family know where they're going. But my (laughs) grandson kind of taught me a lesson because he ended up at the University of Central Arkansas. And now... (laughs) But it's okay. Mm -hmm. The one is switching up a little bit. And that is okay. I I told him as long as he keep bringing me them 3.0 GPAs while he playing football and he's in a pre-med program, I'll take it. You gotta be proud. I'll take it. I have one more question for you. Your husband, how long have y'all been married? I think it's 52 years. My goodness, that is beautiful. So we have the, the standard question of what's the key to 52 years of marriage and how do y all spice things up 52 years that's five decades yeah we can spice them up Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. one of the things show. no it's not it's really not we it, 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 things happen here yeah but what we basically do um is we've always respected one another and supported one another no matter what it was mm. he supported me he was president of a local chapter and i supported him i was president of the national alumni on a national board um, a lot of people think I was president of the local chapter. I've never did president at the local level. Never did at the region level. Went straight to the top. But okay. um, he supported me, and we supported mm-hmm. one another. We love sports. My husband, uh, I was supposed to be a very rich girl because he was supposed to be a oh. baseball player, right? Okay, okay. And did that, not uh, that did not happen. It's okay. Okay. You're he rich went, in love. Look at you. He rich went to found FAMU, and he said after a couple of yeah. practices, cleaned up his cleat, his glove, and he gave it away. <laughs> he said, "This is not for me. I'm going to do academics." But our boys played baseball. Our oldest son played all sports: That's baseball, right. basketball, and so we love sports. So we that brings we, y'all together. We we went to them. We supported the kids. We did things for the leagues that they were in. And now we have our season tickets at FAM. We sit there. We enjoy the games. Uh, we go to things together. And just I would say over the past couple of years, he's gotten to the point where, I mean, I was with the NAACP. I was the president. He was mm-hmm. the community chair. So we've learned a way to talk yeah. together, mm-hmm. to live together, and enjoy life together. And oh, we love to travel. Ouch, ouch, and I ouch. think that's it. And when he makes me angry, uh, what you do? I do the talking. Oh. When I make him angry. He goes sit on the porch. He shuts down. Period. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna and write that me. down. Now I'm gonna You're keep right. that for life. And he ig me. I'm and I that always for life. and a lot of young people ask me this, and I really I really mean this. They were saying, but don't you get angry sometimes? We just uh, I say, look, one thing is, I'm not sending my money that I've helped nurture out to nobody else. Mm. So if he get angry, Preach. I told him I'm gonna be in my bedroom. You take the guest <laughs> bedroom. And when you get it together, we'll bring ourselves back together in the bedroom. <laughs> but I think people Y'all give up that out too there? quick mm. and Take ship off. their money out the. You don't do mm. that. Wow, that's some gems right yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. Some, well, you did. It's a you couple right now listening in the car. You like, didn't mm-hmm. mention your favorite restaurant. Where do you, where do you and your husband like to go out to eat? We eat out so much. Oh, okay. Wow, okay. Well, and one of our favorite restaurants is not no fancy big. Thing. Okay. It's going to be seafood because we're seafood. Oh, okay. And, and it's always been Red Lobster. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they about to close it now. That's what I was just trying to say. And they closed down <laughs> three of them in the, the Tampa biscuits. Bay area. Look, and I forget the biscuits, what I'm going to do without my <laughs> my Neptune platter. <laughs> the Neptune platter. Well, there you have it. Folks. And my yes. son of the side. But wait a minute. But my other favorite restaurant is Conan's. Mm. Oh, Conan's, Conan's barbecue. barbecue. Come yeah. on, and shout we're, out to we're them. Conan's, Conan's almost once a week. Yeah, oh, I love even if it's Conan. a vegetable plate, we're at Conan's. Yeah, uh, yeah, we don't, we don't their need ribs. A, all that hot stuff. Give me red lobster, Conan. Okay, I all love right. it. I love it. Simple. Dr. Carolyn Collins, everybody, Thank Terrence, you. give her a round Thank of applause. You. Thank you. Thank give, you. Give, her, Thank give her a round you. of applause. You. you were incredible. We really appreciate you coming in and being real. 
about what's yeah. going on with the Jackson House and let us get to know you a little bit. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Of course. Yeah. And on behalf of my board, we all say thank you for helping oh. us restore the Jackson House to inspire future generations. Absolutely. Absolutely. We yeah. got your back. We're going to stay. We're going to keep you rooted in progress and we will keep y'all updated on the Jackson House. Yes. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Don't forget, you can join us every Thursday at 11 a.m. WFLA.com. Download the WFLA app. We stream live on Facebook. And then go ahead and like and, and share and, and subscribe to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. You'll catch us there every Thursday. You can also revisit some of our previous episodes, which are a lot of fun as well. So we'll see y'all folks right back here next Thursday. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.